All right. Um, so today we're going to learn about millis, and uh, I'm going to tell you about what that is. So first off, I'm going to create a new circuit, and uh, we're going to go to Arduino, and we're going to go to. Um, Blink without delay, right here, see? Blink without delay. Click here. So we're going to do blink but without delay. And um, let me explain what that is. So um, I'm going to go to a new, uh, I'm going to get a new tab here. And uh, go to Tinkercad real quick. And let's go to a circuit. Oops, not 3D design. What's going on here? Dashboard, circuit. Create new circuit. And I'm going to go to the one of the first ones we did, which was just blink. So I'm going to go to Arduino and then just click blink and then click over here. Let's look at the code real quick. So in blink code, this is text. In blink code, uh, you have one pin, it's pin 13, it goes to an output. And then uh, it turns on, it waits a second, turns off, then waits a second. But what if you got a lot of code going on? So look at all these pins. You have like so many pins on here, right? Tons of pins to use. So you could have all kinds of stuff going on. Sensors sensing things, buttons to push that cancel things, uh, or override things, and all kinds of cool stuff going on. And if you if you leave this delay in here, if you leave delay, then you're going to have some sick lag. You're going to have a two-second lag right here. One, two. So it will not loop this loop. So it's going to go this code. It's going to wait one second. It's going to do this code. It's going to wait one second. So how much time has that been total? Two seconds. So it's going to be two seconds before it gets to the top. And there's only four lines of code right here. Four lines of code. And it's going to take two seconds to do four lines of code every single time. Two seconds to do four lines of code. So what if I have code in there that says, hey, if I push a button, cancel everything. Don't turn any lights on. You know, make it completely dark or... You know, like you could have all kinds of code, right, to do tons of stuff. Those codes may not be activated in time. So if you just do a quick click, when you push a button and you just click real fast, let's say I just push a button real fast, tapping that button, what does that do? It, it sends a signal to your Arduino saying, hey, I pushed a button. And how does it know? Well, because you have a line of code somewhere that says digitally read pin 2. But what if the digital read pin 2 when you clicked it, it didn't read it because it was in the middle of a delay. It was waiting to blink the light off before it went back to the point where, you know, there's a point, a line of code that says, read that pen. So it didn't read the pen when you clicked it. If you got lucky, it might, like if you happen to click it exactly when that line of code was activating, read pin 2, digitally read pin 2. Uh, if it read the pen exactly when you clicked it, good. But if it didn't, then it wouldn't work. And uh, because you have all these delays, and it's like, I'm going to turn the light on, and I'm going to wait a second. I'm going to turn the light off, and I'm going to wait a second. Then I'll go over and digitally read something or whatever. And then I'll do the other line of code. So it's a really waste of time, and mo and you would never do this when you're starting to write a lot of code. Uh, so this is a terrible way to do it. Uh, when you're just learning and you just want to make it blink or do something like that, it totally works fine. And, and a lot of times it works fine. In fact, there's times where you really, really need this. You want... You want your code to stop. It's, maybe it's going a little too fast. You're like, whoa, this code's going too fast. It's making this stuff happen a little too quickly. So this, this is great for slowing your code down and stopping this thing from thinking so fast. But if you want it to think fast and you don't want any delays, you need to use something called millis. So I'm going to go here to code. And uh, here we go. Let me explain how it works. Okay? So... Uh, here we have an integer called LED pin, and it's just pin 13, by the way. That's what that is. LED built-in is the same thing as pin 13. It's that LED that's pin. So you can change this to 13 if you wanted to. But it's fine. You can leave it as is. Uh, INT is an integer, so it's another integer, pretty much the same one. This cost integer just means it cannot be changed later on inside the code. That's all it means. So it's not. it doesn't really matter. You could have just left it as INT. Next INT, next integer. LED state is low, okay. So that means the, the state of the LED is off, okay. Well, then uh, let's see what else we got. Unsigned long. So uh, long is a variable that 
has that can be very long. It can be you know three point two five eight six seven two three two or whatever. Like it can be the super long number. And and we're going to call this variable this previous millis. Okay. So this is going to store a certain timestamp, a timestamp called called previous millis. You can call it whatever you want. Right now it's going to be zero. Then we have another constant. Long, uh, we have a constant long. Uh, oh, here's another long a variable. Uh, but this one's going to remain constant. We're not going to change it. Uh, you can change if you want to change it. You've got to manually change it right here. And this is how long the intervals will be. So if we want it to blink for a thousand milliseconds, like a thousand millisecond delays, we put it right here. If you want to change it, we'll change the number right here. Change it to 100 or whatever you want. All right. In setup, we have one pin, the LED pin. Remember, that's the built-in one. That's pin 13 right here, right? LED pin is pin 13. That's pin 13. So we're taking pin 13 and setting it up as an output. That's it. No, no, nothing else. Okay. Now let's go to the loop. Okay. Here's the loop. Let me explain it. First thing we're going to do is create a new variable. So we're creating a new variable, a long one, that's called current millis. And we're going to set it equal to millis with this like thing right here. You see, oops, oh, let me fix that. Uh, these two parentheses, then don't forget to put the semicolon at the end. What is this right here? That is a code that's always built in to Arduino. And the second you plug in the Arduino, the second you plug it in, the millis start moving. What it is, is there's a timer inside the Arduino, and there's actually multiple timers, I do believe. But there's a timer inside the Arduino that's just constantly running. Uh, if you could ever look at it, it's just telling you how long it's been since it's been plugged in. And that timer will just run and run and run and run. I think there's a limit of like 60-something days. I, I don't remember. I have to look it up before the timer runs out of numbers. Uh, because it's actually counting how many milliseconds it's been since you plugged it in. That's it. And the number gets really big, obviously, after like a certain amount of days. And I don't remember how many days it is, but it's many days. Um, but uh, there's a point where it does uh, run out of time. And it just re I think it just restarts at zero again. So we're going to create this variable. It's a long one. And we're going to call it current millis. And we're going to set it to whatever the time is right now. So if it's been 400,000 milliseconds since we plugged in the, the Arduino, then this current millis will just be set to that. That's all it's doing. It's just kind of st it's, it's kind of stamping the time at that point. The current millisecond is this. That's all it's saying. Then we have an if statement right here. If that current millis, so the current time right now, minus the previous millis, the time before, and we'll talk about that in a second. Right now, it's going to be zero for the very first time we run through this loop, because remember, we, we made it right here. It's going to be zero this first time. So if the current millis is minus this, zero, is greater than or equal to the interval, what's the interval? The interval is right here. It's 1,000 milliseconds. In other words, is, has it been 1,000 milliseconds since the last the last previous millis has it been that much time if so then you're going to do the code from here let's see if i can click it the code from here to where's the end of that code to right here yeah that's right so from here to here so has it been a second? Has it been 1,000 milliseconds? You know, or whatever whatever you typed in here. Has it been that amount of time? That's what this is trying to figure out. If it has, take your previous millis and then make it equal to your current millis. In other words, stamp, change the time. Because we're now going to turn the light on now. And we're going to turn that light on or turn it off. And we're going to stamp the old, the, the new, the, the current time as the previous one. We're going to set it equal to it. And then if the state of your light, your light is low. So if your light is already off, then make your light on. See that? If the state of your LED is equal to low, then set it to high. So turn it on. Otherwise, turn it off. In other words, so if it was on, then turn it off. So all this is doing is making your light turn off or on, depending on what it is. Was it already off? Then turn it on. Was it already on? Then turn it off. It's going to do the opposite. Then, digitally write LED pin LED state. 
So LED pin is pin 13. So just be right to pin 13. And right what? High or low? Uh, well, it depends. Whatever happened here, right? It's going to go back and forth between that. Then it goes back to the top and stamps the current time, uh, what's called a, a, a variable called current millis, and it's going to stamp it to whatever the real current time is inside the uh, Arduino. And then if that current time minus the previous mills, and remember you stamped it right here, you stamped the previous time with the current millis, you kind of made them equal to each other. So it's going to see if it's been longer than a millisecond again. So every millisecond this thing runs through, or maybe multiple times a millisecond, flying through, stamping the times, and all it's doing is going, okay, let me store what time I turned, whenever I turned or turned off the light, let me store that time. And then let me look at that time right now and see if it's been longer than a second or a thousand milliseconds or whatever you type in for that interval. Let me see how long it's been since I last did that. Has it been a thousand milliseconds? No? Okay, then just keep moving along. And then do all this, other, whatever you want to do, more code somewhere else. And that's going to go fly right through that code again and go, okay, and has it been a thousand milliseconds? No, it hasn't. Okay, flies right through it. So it's going to go through there checking over and over and over again really many times. At one point, a second has happened. It has been a second. It's going to say, is the current millis right here? It's going to say, is the current millis, the current millisecond, the time right now, minus the time it used to be, is it greater than a second or equal to it? Yes, it is. It's been a second then. Okay. Then I'll do this. If it's if the light was low, I'll make it high. Otherwise, I'll make it low. In other words, you know, I'm, in other words, do the opposite. And then set the light to that to that state. So this way, you'll never use delay, and your code's never going to delay. It still works exactly the same. You push start, it's going to blink. It's a more complex way to blink, but it turns on for a second and off for a second. You want to change stuff here. Uh, the interval I want it to blink faster just changes to 100, and it should blink at uh, 0.1 seconds. 0.1 seconds on, 0.1 seconds off, just like that. Okay. You want it to blink for a half second on, half second off. Let's put 500 milliseconds here and start the code. It should blink for a half a second on, half second off. So it's one second per cycle. And this is going to be super accurate. It's going to fly through the code. It's never going to delay. If you use delay, it will sit there. The computer will sit there and start twiddling its thumbs, just going, I'm just waiting before I can do the next line of code, because he said don't do the next line of code for one second. I have to just sit here and do nothing. Uh, that works, but this works much better, because it does the same thing, but it never has the computer just sitting around doing nothing. It's always doing something, always checking stuff, and always stamping timestamps and checking those timestamps and seeing if it's been longer than the time that you wanted and stuff like that. You don't have to use all these variables. They use a lot of variables and stuff. You could have just typed in right here. Is the difference longer than, uh, you know, 300, you know, and then just type in 300 right here or whatever, you know, so you don't have to do that. In fact, I think, I think I've actually just put in this where this goes right here. And not, and not made this variable. I think I've done that before, but I think it's supposed to be good practice to be using variables. You know? So that's about it, folks, uh, for uh, using uh, blinking without a delay. Okay?